Hey little hoes, my name is Kristen and welcome back to my channel. So I've attempted to make this video a couple times and my phone has just said no, no more time left so I had to delete crap ton. Anyway, um, this video is going to be me updating you guys on a lot of my mail ordered plants and a lot of new growth happening now so I thought it'd be fun to kind of show you what's going on. I did want to kind of have before pictures to compare them to, but unfortunately, as you guys may know, my laptop is having issues. It's taking a while to get it fixed, and a lot of the videos I had on there, a lot of the clips, um, were not salvageable. So some I had backed up on an external drive, but a lot I did not, and right now I'm not really willing to look through the external drive, figure out an app for my phone to edit on there instead of my laptop. So I'm gonna make the best of it, make do, upload directly. So if there are any mistakes along the way, oh well. Also, the sunroom is taking longer than anticipated, but that is in the work still. And hopefully in a few weeks, I'll be able to get more footage of that, have my laptop back to do editing and compile that. I'm very excited. So let's jump right into it. And again, these plants are all ones that I ordered. These are not trades or ones that I got locally. This is the Anthurium crystallinum that I got from Equigenera, and it's kind of the reason I have kept ordering from them. It was a really good price and obviously a beautiful plant. And me trying to attempt to do this for the third time will show you this I think is a new leaf and I was going to say in my first video that it hasn't shown signs of new growth but I just found that and I'm super excited um, the soil I used for it I had never grown anthuriums before really um, kind of the weird species until this plant so I wanted to get the soil really airy and light. I've heard they enjoy it. So I mixed a lot of perlite with my normal potting soil for houseplants, and that's the Pro Mix. And it seems to be quite happy with it. It's just very light and airy. I did once upon a time try and do an air red mix with bark, spag, perlite, other soil, and I'm not sure I like it a whole lot. I'm sure there's some species that might benefit more from it, but right now I think I'm just digging the plain old perlite and soil mix. They seem to all be pretty okay with it. The next one is the Anthurium rugulosum I got from my last Equigenera order. And as you guys know, if you've mail ordered anything, sometimes it will come in looking good and then have some hang time before it starts to decline. Well, it's been a week today since I got it, and it seems to be okay. This is the adult leaf, and this is the baby leaf, and the baby leaf does have a little damage over here, and the edges have started to slightly crisp, and I'm thinking that's just damage from shipping, but to be expected, it's a lot thinner than the mama leaf here, and this plant did have kind of a stump on it. Some roots, not extensive, and I was a little worried about rotting it out. So I decided airflow was the key. I used very gritty mix and put it in this pot. And if anyone has done um, aquatic plants, hydroponics, you will know that that's what this pot is meant for. Some people use it for orchids, and it has a bunch of slots. And I figured that air circulation might help prevent that stump from rotting. And I just popped it right in this pot, which I absolutely love. I got it while thrifting, two bucks. And I love this combo, this peanut butter and jelly pot and plant combo. This is the one I got from Etsy a few weeks ago. I fondly call her, no, not Etsy, uh, Mercari, and I call her Grizzled Grizzel, it's Philodendron Graziel, 
Hasn't grown much. I'm trying to keep the soil damp but not wet because the roots weren't huge. So trying to keep that kind of even keel. There is a new little growth point there, but I'm guessing it's not going to do anything for quite a while because it's focusing on establishing the roots. And that is the booby pot that my boyfriend made me. I have been pestering him for a while to make it, and he did. I absolutely love it. They are very expensive online, so I'm very happy that he could make me something like this. This is the Alocasia zebrina reticulata I got last year from the people's plants. It was a little bit small, but came in looking okay. Over winter, I almost killed it. It, this spring, was down to one leaf. I was very sure it was a goner, but it has since recovered and put two new leaves on, including this shiny boy. Very pretty. And I got this from the people's plants, and you guys remember the drama surrounding them. Um, according to my friend, I don't know if it's their company rebranded or someone from the company started their own, but somebody from the people's plants is selling on Etsy, and they seem to be getting pretty decent reviews. So, I don't know, I might have to check them out at some point. Um, they were very frustrating to work with the company very poor communication and a lot of frustration from many customers with that, you know, inability to get back to people about the status of their orders. And I was one of them. It was very frustrating. End of the day, the plants looked good, but a lot of frustration. Um, then this guy is the Wendlandia I got from Peace, Love, and Happiness Club a few weeks ago. It was kind of expensive, but I'm not sorry I got it. I really enjoy it. I I needed some retail therapy at the moment, and it's it's doing really good. Um, very similar to my Rei, but it looks greener, and I have a feeling the spe this species will be a little bit bigger when it's mature. So the probably the most disappointing of the group is the Mammy I got from Equigenera. And you guys will remember it came in kind of mushy. And after a few days, it just started to dwindle and the leaves browned, yellowed, and I cut them back. Well, I have popped a glass on there to help with humidity. I'm not sure if this is just like the sheath, the catafil, is it? or the actual leaf, but it started to come out and then it started to brown. I'm not sure if that's too much humidity, not enough humidity. I'm not sure what I'm doing right or wrong here, but that's kind of just the chances you take with mail order plants, especially getting them overseas. And a lot of these companies that sell them domestically, they take on the risk and they deal with this all the time. So I think Overall, if you order from a place and majority come in looking good, that's a win. You're going to experience some of these fails along the way or really tough plants. Some might not be recoverable, but if the overall experience is good, I would order from them again. And this is probably the least impressive, most disappointing I've gotten from Equigenera, but I am keeping on trying to get her to recover. I'll keep you guys updated. Then this is the Philodendron Fibrosum I got, also from Echogenera. This is my first purchase, along with the Anthurium Crystallinum, and it is putting off a new leaf, guys. And I made a huge mistake when I first got it. I was worried that the roots weren't big and would rot if I watered it heavily when I first repotted it. I didn't. I misted it really, really well, but it was so wilty the next day. Even boyfriend noticed, and if Casey notices that a plant's doing poorly, it's doing really, really bad. But I tented it with some plastic, a plastic bag, and watered the crap out of it, and that humidity helped it pop back to life. 
So I'm very excited for this new growth. I've been trying to keep all the new leaves pretty well misted, humid to help them unfurl. I've been having issues in the living room at least with philodendrons not wanting to unfurl and I'm not sure if it's because the living room is so much less humid than the bathroom, if it's just that dry air, if there's a nutrient deficiency going on that I need to start adding back into the soil. I'm not sure there's a humidifier in there, but maybe it's just not enough. And this guy is the Verucosum I got from my second order from Equigenera. And you guys will remember I did chop back a good portion off the Verucosum to try and root it. And unfortunately, I keep beating myself up. It was not successful and died. I'm guessing there just wasn't enough energy in the plant to put new roots into those nodes that I chopped off. It was just probably tired out from the journey, didn't make it. I'm kind of sad I didn't leave it so I'd have an automatically bigger plant, but you know, I'm lying to myself and saying that it put all the energy down into the roots to make this new leaf possible. It's got that. I, I really do want to get more forms of varicosum. Apparently there's a lot and I would love one day to get the El Chaco red. Now, this guy is the Anthurium beachii I got from the people's plants as well. Just a little plug when it came in, really good deal. It started to decline, so I put it in a terrarium, started to decline even harder there, so I moved it to this little terracotta pot. And normally I am not one for putting plants in tiny terracotta other than cacti, but he seems happy and I don't know. I don't know about you guys, but I feel that terracotta on a lot of arids, particularly those that might be a little bit finicky, a little bit prone to drama, do well in terracotta just because it's so wicking. It helps with airflow. It helps prevent to some extent the roots getting overly wet and saturated and staying that way. Not just my thoughts. I'd like to hear yours too. Now this was and eBay, pretty much my one and only eBay purchase. This is the Ring of Fire I got last year. I almost killed it. I thought it was doing good, but over the winter I discovered that maybe I was overwatering as it was kind of in a dormant or at least not actively growing state and I almost killed it from root rot. So I plunked it in some super perlite heavy soil. Um, put it in this bathroom window. It was in the living room. I put it here and I think just that bright indirect light and the super draining soil helped recover it. And I, it's been disappointing. It hasn't been a vigorous grower at all, but it has recently put off some, albeit funky looking new growth. This guy is actually looking pretty decent. And the one thing about putting the ring of fire in so much sun is that you will get those awesome orange tones to the variegation before it matures to more of that golden yellow. And then perhaps my favorite plant currently, it's the Syngonium raii. And it's just, I got this from I think it was glass box tropicals. I, I'm not sure at the moment. Pretty sure. Maybe? I don't know. Um, I love it. If anybody sees this plant, I highly recommend buying it because, oh God, this is dangerous. Oh God. Because it is a fast grower. It's vigorous. And those leaves are just so dark and velvety. And look at it. I mean, how could you not love it? And I have a black pot that's kind of a matte black that I recently got. I'm gonna put them in here soon. Put it in that soon. I think the combo would be really cool. But this is Rei. I am I'm in love with it. I'm sure there will be another plant that takes its spot for number one, but yeah. 
Probably not anytime soon, I'm guessing. So guys, that will be it for today's video. I will try and do an update on the plants in my living room that were mail ordered. So hopefully you stay tuned for that. I hope you are all staying healthy, happy, sane, and I will talk to you all later. A goodbye.